Greetings, Pokey fans! Michael here, and I, along with many others, consider Pokemon Coliseum to be the most difficult Pokemon game with main series battle mechanics. However, despite that reputation, most of the Pokemon community has never played it, since it's a spin-off game that came out on the GameCube over 17 years ago. Yikes. Since it's a game I have a strong fondness for, I wanted to make this video where I explain to you all both how the game itself works, but also why it has a reputation for being so difficult. And yes, Colosseum does have a sequel, Pokemon XD Gale of Darkness, a game that I think is even better and like even more, but I'm not gonna be talking about it as much in this video because I don't believe it to be as difficult. It's still tough, but I think it's easier than Colosseum for a few reasons that I'll discuss as we get further along into the video. So don't forget to subscribe to my channel since less than half of my viewers are subscribed and that makes me sad. And let's dive in to the hardest Pokemon game you probably have never played, Pokemon Colosseum. We'll start first with the world and setup of Pokemon Colosseum. Now at first it may seem like it's a successor to Pokemon Stadium and Stadium 2, However, Colosseum goes much deeper because it has an entire story mode that the stadium games do not. And this story mode, my God, it is something else. The game begins with you naming the main character who is clearly way older and angrier than most Pokemon protagonists. The default name for him is Wes, which is what I'll continue to call him, but you can name him anything you want. An opening cutscene begins in a barren desert canyon showing a Skarmory flying by, then a poorly constructed building nestled in the rock and occupied by a horde of bald men wearing ridiculous headsets that make them look like they shaved only the top of their heads. And then the building blows up with all of those people still inside. Seconds later, you learn that the explosion was caused by Wes, who is you, the main character in a Pokemon game. He strolls through the gaping hole in the wall he created and up to this sleeve machine, puts a hand on it, then grins in truly disturbing fashion. I'm not the only one who thinks he has way too many teeth, right? As the hordes of bald men chase after him, Wes runs off with his prize under his arm and his Umbreon at his side. Wait, his Umbreon? Oh yes, don't expect typical starter Pokemon in this game. Wes gets to his enormous, gas-guzzling, one-wheeled hover motorcycle where his Espeon awaits, then races off into the desert, but not before blowing up the building even more. Could you imagine Pokemon Ruby version starting off with May committing arson? In the first few minutes of this game, the main character has caused serious property damage, committed theft of proprietary technology, and endangered the lives of dozens of bald men. It's almost as if he's a criminal. Oh, wait, he is. But we'll get to that in a minute. Wes rolls up to this bar slash restaurant. Yeah, it's, it's a bar made from an abandoned train. How did it get into the middle of the desert? How do people know to come here? How do people actually get here? No idea. As he arrives, two ridiculous looking characters exit the building mentioning having bagged themselves a big catch, referring to the bag on their hover truck. Oh, but what's in the bag? Well, just wait. They leave and Wes enters the restaurant called the Outskirt Stand. A news report immediately plays talking about your building demolition, which is revealed to be the hideout of the evil team Snagum. Oh, okay, so you stole from and blew up the building of an evil team. Does that lessen the severity of your actions? Yeah, kind of. Still could have killed someone, but eh. Ha ha, it is I, Gorontip boy. Ugh, why are you here? I am here to fulfill my court ordered community service. Did you finally get caught stealing? What? No, come on, I'm a professional. I got caught spray painting M and J T V has a flat butt on the side of a bus. How dare you, it is a dump truck. Yeah, sure, keep telling yourself that. Anyways, I'd like to get started by reading this statement. <clears throat> This video is sponsored by Raycon. Wait, what? Raycon wireless earbuds are disrupting the electronics industry by providing great sound starting at half the price of other premium audio brands. They give you six hours of playtime, seamless Bluetooth pairing, more bass, and a more compact design for a comfortable noise isolating fit. Right, but how does this count as- Raycon earbuds come in a range of fun colors, patterns, and fit options, and they don't have any dangling wires that get in the way while going about your day. 
celebrities like Snoop Dogg and Grunty Boy are obsessed with them and they have a 45 day return policy. Grunty Boy, what are you doing? Everything you've said about Raycons is correct, but how does you saying that count as community service? Because by informing your viewers of how great Raycon earbuds are and of the fact that they can get 15% off their purchase by clicking the link in the description below or by going to buyraycon.com slash MNJTV, I am providing your community a service. But I, you, wow, it's actually really hard to argue with that. So don't. Anyways, that wraps up my community service, so I will be going now. Wait, that's it? They only ordered you to complete one minute? Yeah, the judge gave me a light sentence because he agreed with my flat butt comments. Ta-ta! It is a dump truck, I say! Ugh, anyways, thanks so much to Raycon for sponsoring this video, but now let's get back to it. Wes moves on like nothing is wrong and leaves when suddenly a pink haired fellow named Willie challenges Wes to a battle. The battle begins with some truly excellent music. The music in this game, top notch. And it is a double battle. Every single battle in Pokemon Coliseum story mode is a double battle. And that's actually reason number one why I consider it to be the most difficult Pokemon game. Double battles are by nature more difficult than single battles. In most main series single battles, you just bring in a Pokemon with the type advantage over the enemy Pokemon and blast it away with a super effective move. In double battles, you might have one Pokemon that's strong against one of the enemy Pokemon, but if your other Pokemon is weak to it, then what's gonna happen to it? And what if the other enemy Pokemon is strong against yours that's good against that other enemy Pokemon? Also moves that are really powerful staple moves of single battles like Earthquake have to be thought about more because if you don't have a flying type partner, you're gonna hurt your own Pokemon. Now, utilizing Protect in double battles can make this a lot easier, but you don't get access to the Protect TM until a decent chunk into the story. And also, if you're a kid, like I was when I was playing this for the first time, I didn't think about that. Willie uses two Zigzagoons while you send out the Umbreon and Espeon seen in the opening cutscene. And they are levels 25 and 26. Yep, the game is starting here. This game has the highest starting level of any game with main series Pokemon battle mechanics. Why did they do this? Well, I'm not entirely sure, but my best guess is to shorten the story. After defeating Willie, Wes rides off to Fennec City an oasis town in the middle of the desert. Upon arriving, he stumbles upon the two ridiculous gentlemen messing with a big bag, and before long, the dialogue reveals that inside that bag is a person that they have kidnapped. Now, Pokemon's had kidnapping before. Team Skull kidnaps Lily in the Alola games. However, they didn't shove Lily into a bag and literally tape her mouth shut. We're still mere minutes into this game and the amount of serious crimes that have committed is about to go on to a second hand. One of the kidnappers attacks, revealing himself as Shady Guy Folly. After beating him, he appears to recognize Wes as Team Snagum's something, but then some onlookers arrive. One of the Shady Guys mounts the excellent defense of, you be quiet, we're no robbers, we're kidnappers. Get it, kidnappers, which is just, wow. Thank goodness you're kidnappers. Man, if you were robbers, I would have been really concerned, but kidnappers, we're good. After Wes unties the knot, the woman inside the bag is revealed. You can pick her name, but her default name is Rui, so that's what I'll go with. The onlookers suggest visiting the mayor to report what went down with her. A truly horrifying man exits his house as you arrive, then you enter and meet S. Kate, the mayor. Rui reports seeing a Pokemon with a black aura around it that is aggressive to the point of attacking people. The mayor doesn't really believe her, but orders an investigation and suggests a visit to Fennec Stadium in the meantime. A guy out front once again mentions Team Snagum's hideout being blown up, which remember, Wes did. Then suddenly, after entering and leaving the stadium, two Team Snagum grunts confront Wes and call him a traitor. This conversation reveals that Wes did not blow up the hideout randomly. He was a member of Team Snagum. And not just a member, but a snagger. Meaning he was the best of the best at using a snag machine to steal Pokemon from other people. Oh my God. For those of you who've ever wanted to play a Pokemon game as a bad guy, Pokemon Coliseum is the closest I think you're ever gonna get. Cause Wes does end up a good guy in the end, 
But at the beginning of the story and prior to the story, he was literally a member of an evil team and committed who knows how many crimes before that. And actually committed crimes during the opening scenes of the game. The grunts reveal that the sleeve machine he stole is the snag machine, which allows the user to convert their pokeballs into snag balls. Pokeballs that will not fail when used on another trainer's Pokemon. Wes fights them off, and Rui is okay with Wes's former occupation due to being grateful for him saving her, even referring to him as a gallant prince. Which, I suppose I get. Girls like bad boys, Wes is a bad boy. Rui suggests you buy Pokeballs, which proves difficult since wild Pokemon are not in Ore, the region where this game takes place. That's right, no wild Pokemon. Pokemon XD added a few, but in Colosseum, there are literally none. So how do you get more Pokemon? Well, I think you can see where this is going. You have to head back to the outskirts stand to buy some, and this remains the only place to buy them the rest of the game, which let me tell you can get inconvenient. After buying some and returning to Fennec, crazy people have shown up, including the kidnappers. In the mayor's house is the iconic Mirror Bee, whose theme in this game is my favorite music in all of Pokemon and is the music I use as the background music for most of my videos. The colorful gentleman head out, then Folly attacks you again. You beat him, then the other one, whose name is Trudley, attacks. This game is just full of absurd character names. Trudley is ridiculous. The amount of times I accidentally typed it as Turdly while writing this script is large. During the battle, Trudley sends out a Makuhita. And finally, the central concept of Pokemon Coliseum is revealed. Rui, and only Rui, well, and you, the real world player, sees a shadowy aura around the Makuhita. Then the Makuhita freaking punches Wes, yikes, and then Rui tells you that you have to catch it. Using the Snag Machine, you can then capture the Makuhita during a trainer battle and keep it as your own. Wes and Rui then go on to gallivant around Ore in an effort to take down Cypher, the evil organization making shadow Pokemon. They aim to do this while rescuing various shadow Pokemon by stealing them from their trainers in order to purify them. It is a really fun game, but it's a kind of hard one. As I mentioned earlier, reason number one why Colosseum is so difficult is that all of the battles are double battles. Reason number two why it's so difficult could be just this big umbrella labeled shadow Pokemon, but I think it makes more sense to divide it into more specific categories. So the actual reason number two why it's so difficult is that your Pokemon options are very limited. Aside from a few not very good gift Pokemon, the only Pokemon you can obtain in the story mode of Colosseum are shadow Pokemon caught during trainer battles. Is this a cool concept? Hell yeah it is. Does it make the game harder? Oh my God, yes it does. In a mainline Pokemon game, you have limitless Pokemon options. The amount of Pokemon you can find in the wild is literally limitless, but also the number of species you can use is well over a hundred in most Pokemon games. But in Colosseum, basically the only Pokemon you can get are the shadow Pokemon. And while some give you limitless retries to catch, other ones, you only get one shot. Not one shot in total, but one shot at that time. That means that if you happen to KO it or you run out of Pokeballs, you may not have another chance to catch that Pokemon for a really long time. Like, you've beaten the main story long time. Of course, you can get around this by saving beforehand and resetting if you mess up, which let me tell you, I did a lot as a kid. And also, when I've played it as an adult. But sometimes that isn't even an option. In Colosseum, you can only save at PCs, which means you can go a long way between saving, so if you didn't happen to backtrack a lot in order to prepare, you could be caught off guard and miss your only chance. So not only is the physical amount of Pokemon you can get limited, but the species are predetermined. This is a list of all the shadow Pokemon in the game, and most of them kind of freaking suck. Most of the shadow Pokemon are from Johto, a region infamous for including a lot of really weak, fully evolved Pokemon. Hence why so many of them got evolutions in gen four. And while some of these Pokemon are decent Pokemon, they aren't actually good because many of them still had horrifically bad movesets in gen three. Take Piloswine, for example. It has a base stat total of 450. It's not great, but it's far from useless. 
However, if you look at its Gen 3 moveset, it doesn't learn a ground move by level up at all. Ground is its better attacking type since ground moves were physical in Gen 3 and its attack is much higher than its special attack. But even its weaker special attack can't make proper use of its ice stab since it gets powder snow at level 10 and then no ice attacks until blizzard at 56. So many of the shadow Pokemon need TMs to be effective and remember, TMs were still single use in Gen 3. To give you an idea of how not useful most of the Pokemon are, Smogon has an article that puts the obtainable Pokemon in Colosseum into tiers based on how useful they are for a playthrough, taking into account both battle effectiveness and obtainment point in the story. They have four tiers, high, medium, low, and bottom. Of the 53 total Pokemon, 11 are high tier, 11 are mid tier, 21 are low tier, and 10 are bottom tier. That means 31 of the 53 Pokemon are in low or bottom tier. That means 58% of the available Pokemon are not recommended to be used. That's insane. Now there are some really good Pokemon available, like the starter Evolutions, some of the Johto starters, Ampharos, and of course the legendary beasts. However, they still have some limitations. Their obtainment points are spread out, the beasts are really hard to catch, and since there's literally only one of each, that means their IVs and natures are predetermined. So if you get a really crappy nature for one of them, you can't get any more, you're stuck with it. Colosseum forces you into winning with a limited roster, so it's basically like a playthrough challenge that's already baked in. Pokemon XD is also limited in the Pokemon options, but it's not nearly as limited. There's a lot more shadow Pokemon available, like twice the amount approximately, and also a lot of them are a lot better. Plus they make re-attempts of shadow Pokemon you failed a lot easier and a lot sooner. So you're limited in what Pokemon you can get, but it doesn't stop there. Reason number three Colosseum is so difficult is that actually catching those shadow Pokemon is much harder than in main series games. Double battles are already tricky, but double battles where you have to be careful about not KOing one of the enemy Pokemon adds an extra level of difficulty. Additionally, if you're trying to catch the shadow Pokemon before wiping out the rest of the enemy team, that means you're using one of your two Pokemon's turns just to hope you catch the shadow Pokemon while the enemy gets to hit you twice. There is a real chance for you to lose battles just by trying to catch a Pokemon. But the big reason why catching these shadow Pokemon is so hard is that every shadow Pokemon, every single one of them, knows a recoil move. Every shadow Pokemon knows Shadow Rush, a base 90 power move with 100% accuracy that does recoil damage equal to 1 16th of the user's maximum HP. The worst type of move for a desired to catch Pokemon to have is a self KOing move. The second worst type of move for a Pokemon you're trying to catch to have is a recoil move because it limits how much damage you can do to them and also makes it so they might just off themselves. False swipe is out the window because if you false swipe it down to one HP, it uses the recoil move once and it's dead. So with every single one of the limited shadow Pokemon having a recoil move, failure is inevitable. It is extremely difficult to successfully catch every single shadow Pokemon first try without saving and resetting because there's gonna be some that just simply KO themselves. And failure is far more devastating due to the limited options. In a regular Pokemon game, if you knock out a Pokemon you're trying to catch, most of the time you run around in the grass a bit more and find a different one. In Colosseum, while some you can re-attempt right away, others are just gone for a while. XD made catching easier by weakening Shadow Rush's power, but also making it not do recoil damage. They also added a lot of other shadow moves that Pokemon use instead. The only one of them that does recoil is Shadow End, which only five late game shadow Pokemon know. And the recoil is half the user's current HP, meaning it can't KO the user unless they only have one HP. I mean, it's still hard because if they outspeed you, they could do recoil to themselves, then your attack that wasn't gonna KO does KO. But like I said, it's only a few shadow Pokemon late in the game. Colosseum, the whole time you're dealing with recoil damage and it's way tougher. So your Pokemon options are limited. Most of those Pokemon are bad. 
and they're difficult to catch. But let's say you overcome those obstacles. Let's say you catch some shadow Pokemon. They've gotta be better than regular Pokemon, right? After all, that's why they were made, to be stronger Pokemon that are meaner, right? Ha <laughs> ha, dear God, no. Reason number four why Colosseum is hard. Shadow Pokemon, you know, basically the only Pokemon you can get all game, are garbage. The game is incentivizing you to do the right thing and purify them, which makes sense, but that means in the meantime, the shadow Pokemon are way worse than regular Pokemon. Let's dive into the reasons why. The first reason is that they can't level up. A shadow Pokemon will be frozen at the level it was caught at until it is purified. To be clear, it doesn't lose the experience points. It gains them all at once upon purification. But until you purify it, the Pokemon is stuck at one specific level while the regular Pokemon around it all get stronger. The second is that they have limited moves. All of them start with just Shadow Rush and then three question, question, question moves that get revealed the more you decrease the heart gauge. However, their best move tends to be the last one revealed and Shadow Rush is a garbage move in the meantime because it does recoil damage. Also, you can't use any TMs on it in the meantime you're gonna be stuck with just Shadow Rush for a good chunk of time. As I mentioned earlier, XD added a lot of other Shadow moves that are substantially better than Shadow Rush. So the Shadow Pokemon are not as bad in the move department, but they still have to deal with not being able to level up. And the third reason they're bad, the most frustrating reason in my opinion is Hyper Mode. If ordered to use Shadow Rush, a Shadow Pokemon has a chance to enter Hyper Mode a mode where its emotions rise to a fever pitch and it has a high critical hit ratio. It seems helpful, but it's not. If ordered to use any move except Shadow Rush, a Pokemon may disobey and use another move, usually Shadow Rush, turn and attack its teammate, attempt to use its item, even if it doesn't hold one, hurt itself as if it were confused, attack its trainer or the opposing trainer, which has no battle effect, do nothing at all, or return to its Pokeball. It might use the attack you want it to, but more than likely it's gonna do something obnoxious you don't want it to. You're clearly incentivized to get it out of hyper mode ASAP, which you mainly do by calling it, since using sense is a using of an item and waiting is not practical. In Colosseum, the call option replaces the run option, since there are no wild Pokemon. Calling can wake up a Pokemon from sleep, snap them out of confusion, and be used to waste a turn when you're doing nothing but throwing Pokeballs at a Shadow Pokemon. But calling uses up a turn, and when a Shadow Pokemon enters Hyper Mode, it doesn't do so then attack. It enters it instead of attacking, which means that if a Pokemon enters Hyper Mode, it takes two turns to get it out of it. Two turns which are totally gone. One for it entering it, and one for calling it out of it. It's Ugh, ugh, I can't even talk, it's so frustrating. A shadow Pokemon will enter hyper mode more and more often the closer it gets to purification, but thankfully by that time you will have unlocked other moves and will be using Shadow Rush less and less often. XD meanwhile doesn't have hyper mode, it has reverse mode, which is similar but not quite the same. It doesn't boost the Shadow Rush critical hit ratio, doesn't boost the critical hit ratio at all, and also the Pokemon hurts itself at the end of every turn. However, it is distinctly better than Hyper Mode because Hyper Mode, you waste a turn entering it. Reverse Mode, it enters it after a shadow move is used. So you still lose a turn by calling it out of it, but you don't lose two turns by losing that turn when it enters it. So shadow Pokemon stink, and you're clearly incentivized to make them not shadow Pokemon as fast as possible. But purifying them takes time and effort because it takes a while to get that heart gauge down to zero before you can go through the purification process. However, even if you get the heart gauges down, you can't purify them until a while into the story. You unlock purification in a gate village, which in Bulbapedia's walkthrough doesn't happen until part five of their nine part walkthrough. So in summation, Pokemon Coliseum is the most difficult Pokemon game with main series battle mechanics because all the battles are a trickier battle style, double battles. You're limited in Pokemon options and most of those options stink. Catching those Pokemon is more difficult than usual and the Pokemon you do catch are gonna kinda suck for a while. Now this isn't to say that Coliseum is some brutally difficult game only a few geniuses will be able to conquer. I was still able to beat it as a kid albeit uh, using a guidebook, 
and resetting my saves whenever I failed to catch a shadow Pokemon, which was relatively regularly, but I was still able to beat it. But it's a lot more difficult than most Pokemon games because you can't just build a strong team of whatever you want and sweep through the boss battles because all their Pokemon are weak to one type move and you have a strong Pokemon of that type. In Colosseum, the boss battles for the most part, don't have type specialties. Maybe that should be reason number five. I highly recommend you give it a shot though, especially if you're looking for more challenge than regular Pokemon games provide. It's such a unique game that's really cool, and I wish got more recognition than it has gotten in the past from the Pokemon community. And Pokemon itself, they didn't even include it in that 25th anniversary little video thing, what the heck? XD is the better game in my opinion, but I still recommend you play Colosseum first. You'll be able to appreciate XD more that way since the story is a sequel to Colosseum and the mechanic improvements will, well, they'll be a lot more enjoyable. Thanks so much for watching and an extra special thanks to my patrons over on Patreon who are helping support my channel independent of fluctuating YouTube ad rates. If you wanna help support me in the same way, the link is in the description below. Also, if you wanna check out some more of my fun Pokemon content, I recommend these videos here. All right, that's all I have for now. So until next time, big hands. Gotta catch them all.